and welcome back to daytime here on Rogers TV. You know what? One of the best things about filling in for Ken is anytime you get to come into the daytime kitchen because it is great in here. Uh, today we're joined by uh, Margaret Coons, a chef over at uh, Veg Out Restaurant, uh, but uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, nuts for cheese uh, as well. Uh, Margaret, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Um, so I guess my first question, because we're talking all vegan today and, and we're going to make a vegan dish, but is this, uh, we talked a bit, little bit about it in the break, but is this a recent trend that people are going more vegan? I think it's definitely becoming more and more popular to adopt a plant-based diet, whatever that means, vegetarian or vegan. Um, but definitely veganism has been growing exponentially in recent years. Yeah, and you know what, we're, we're going to get into to making some of this, but the, one of the big things is uh, cheese options. Every, you know, I'm a, a big fan of cheese. Mm -hmm. I, I have it with almost every meal. Um, for a vegan, what options are out there when it comes to cheese? Well, there's a handful of vegan options available for cheese. Um, until recently, there weren't very many sort of naturally uh, based items. So mm -hmm. a lot of things contained a lot of uh, preservatives or different sort of unfamiliar ingredients. So I started a vegan cheese business in May, mm -hmm. where I make about eight different types of cashew-based vegan cheeses that have all natural, healthy ingredients and uh, sell them around town. And uh, the big question, the, the taste, is it, it tastes like cheese? I think it definitely tastes yeah. like cheese. So they're all cultured uh, with a lacto-fermented um, culturing agent. So it does um, have the cheesy taste for sure. Yeah? yeah. Do you have some? Can I, I do. I can, can I try a little bit? Of course. Bit? Ooh. So, um, so, and then what are we making today? What are we uh, focusing in on today? So today we are going to make um, ricotta and herb stuffed portobello mushroom caps. We're okay. going to make a stuffing um, with some celery, onions, breadcrumbs, cheese, two different types of nuts for cheese products actually. And okay. then we're going to set the mushroom caps on a bed of a creamy farro risotto. Okay. So farro is just an ancient grain. We've mm -hmm. cooked it in the same style as you would any other risotto grain. Um, so it has that starch production and can taste really creamy. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Where do we start uh, with our recipe? So we've got our pan heating up here. I'm just going to kick it up a notch. Okay. And we're going to add a little bit of olive oil to the pan. So I'd say about two tablespoons. And from here we're going to add just some diced white onion. Okay. So I'll get that in there. And then with the onions, it's going to add a pinch of salt. Okay. And then you mentioned there's two types of the, the nuts for cheese that yes. is going to go in this. So um, the first, what are we looking at? The first one we've got is a cashew and tofu ricotta. Okay. So this is a cultured cashew base, but it is textured with organic tofu for that sort of light, fluffy uh, quality that ricotta okay. has. Mm -hmm. And then the second type we're going to use is my um, unbelievable. It's a coconut okay. cashew brie. Yep. Uh, so this is a super creamy... Uh, really meltable cheese, okay. so it's nice going to hold the uh, stuffing together with the mushrooms. Nice. And then yeah. you said these are just two of the options that you have yes. at Nuts for Cheese. What what else is, is available? So I've also got a chipotle cheddar. I've got a smoky artichoke and herb. I actually have a super blue cheese. It's marbled with spirulina, so it's like a superfood. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple different cream cheeses. A roasted red pepper and artichoke has been extremely popular at the markets lately. And uh, for the holiday time, I've got a candied orange zest and cranberry chevre, the sort of sweet and tangy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. lots, lots of options. Lots of options for okay, sure. Okay, uh, let's continue along with our uh, dish here. Sure. So next, we're going to add some celery. Um, so celery is just going to add some nice flavor to those onions. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to hear a little sizzling there, which is good. <laughs> That's good, yes. And then next, I've got just the stumps of the portobello mushrooms. Before I roasted them, I removed the stumps and just chopped them up. So and, that'll also and, and is that key for one of these? I know when I make those at home too, it's mm -hmm. it's always nice to keep those stems and, and add sure. them into the stuffing. Yeah, I think it just adds like a richer, more mushroomy flavor and you know, why waste it if yeah, you can use it in the it? recipe yeah, exactly. for sure. And next I've got just some minced garlic. So we'll mix that in there as well. We'll just sort of give this a second to saute here. So this is sort of um, like a mirepoix, it's like almost like a soup base. Okay. So it's going to create a really flavorful base layer for the stuffing. Mm -hmm. um, that'll go really nicely with the mushrooms. Okay. Yeah. And it gives it some of that flavor, gives it some of that, uh, that texture. Um, are we also, like, again, to, to really hold it together, it's the cheeses and it's then the, the breadcrumbs too? Yes, is the breadcrumbs as well. So we've got okay. some breadcrumbs here. 
We're going to add these near the end because okay. we want them to stay a little crispy. Yep. And then if you were making this at home, we're not going to do this here today because we don't have an oven, but if you're making it at home after you stuff the mushrooms, I would actually place them back in the oven mm -hmm. so that the breadcrumbs and the cheese will get really melty and crispy. Um, and then another thing is, so the mushrooms here, I've marinated these and roasted them already just so that they're ready to go. And same with the farro. Mm -hmm. So the mushrooms are just a really simple marinade. There's a little bit of tamari, a little bit of rice wine vinegar and some olive oil, a little bit of sea salt as well. Okay. And then the farro, uh, all you do is cook it like you would a risotto. So I've toasted the grains with some olive oil and sea salt and then slowly added a homemade vegetable stock and it takes about two and a half hours to cook. Mm -hmm. uh, so just really slowly until it absorbs all the liquid and you'll see that starch production in the grains when you um, when you stir the pot. Okay, so yeah. uh, we've got our vegetables uh, going here a little bit. Uh, we are going to uh, continue along with this. How long would you usually leave uh, these vegetables cooking for? It's just um, until they get soft? Yeah, it doesn't take too long, really about five minutes tops, um, just to soften them because you are going to place it in the oven as well. And it'll take a few more minutes once we get the cheese in there as well. Okay, so anyone who's looking for nuts for cheese, uh, where can they go to find nuts for cheese? The Western Fair Farmers Market on Saturdays, okay. uh, globally local in Lambeth, mm -hmm. Yoda's Kitchen in St. Thomas, and the V Word Market in Toronto. And uh, will you be at VegFest? I will, week? I'll be at VegFest this week. This week? making as much cheese as I possibly can, and I'll also be doing a cooking demo on behalf of Vegette Restaurant. All right, well, uh, we're in the daytime kitchen uh, with Margaret Coons. Uh, we are gonna continue uh, making our dish here, uh, adding in some of the nuts for cheese and, and plating it as well when we return here on Daytime London. Help support the London Christian Academy with a fantastic shopping event. Deck the Halls 2015 is taking place November 13th and 14th at London Christian Academy. Visit londonchristianacademy.ca for all the details. For more community events, go to rogerstv.com.